the ancient east, we find landscapes filled with narrow fjords, jagged peaks, toppling waterfalls and skiers who are also hunters, upholding and embracing the traditions of the past. When I am in an interview like this, I have no idea what I said in the beginning. Do you not have powder or anything too? Okay. Let me look nice. Could you tell me your full name, age, where you're from, and job title? <coughs> yeah. My name is Saivar Guðjónsson. I'm 52 years old, from Eskifjörður in the east coast of Iceland. Born and raised here. My work is uh, as a guide. Hunter guide, walking guide and ski guide. What is beautiful with this area is that that is in the sunny side but that is not before three o'clock when the sun is shining into the slopes. You have your sun on your face and it's bright and sunny but the sun is already there half past one but at three o'clock that is shining into it so, so we keep, keep the slopes better for longer time than any other, other uh, ski resorts in Iceland. To grow up here in this town was very nice because you have all the freedom. You were just thrown out in the morning and you came late in the evening. We were playing outside the whole whole day. Our mountain above the town was our playground. The jetties around the sea. My father was a, a seaman, so so we were a lot about the sea. Uh, in the summertime, we had boats we were sailing on the fjord. So. Yeah, it was a lot of freedom and, and nothing to be scared of. I remember my first skis when I was six or something were about 150 the length, uh, wooden skis with no iron on the side. Just uh, old wooden skis and I was in uh, rubber shoes on them. So that was a tough to ski. That was my first skis, but then uh, we did not have any ski lifts, so we were walking up and we were preparing the slopes with, with going up on the skis first and then ski down. So that was, yeah, that was the beginning. I remember my father often drove me up to the ski area and we were skiing there the whole day. And then we were skiing home all the way down to the town. We were never picked up at the ski area in, in my memories. During my, my teenager years, I was yeah, racing on skis and, and, uh, and practicing skiing. So that was a good base for, for the future. But then, when I was 26 years old, I tried telemarking for the first time. I fought for that in the beginning, and that was very, very nice, different. And then I was beginner again, because that's a whole different technique. Yeah, that is not in many places in the world where you can ski from uh, maybe 11, 1200 meters high mountains down to the sea level. And in the fjords here, of course, you have always a fjord below you. And that is what is special with the East Fjords, uh, or with Iceland, you can say, because that's also in the north and west. These areas here are very easy to reach. We have uh, mountain roads uh, over the mountains here, and then we have roads on both sides of the mountain, uh, on, the, on the coast, so you can go up and, and uh, ski down the other side and, and there is always a road to pick you up and so on.
Then we have also quite the rough mountains. They can be steep and they can be rough cliffs and so on. So you have to know the area because it is difficult to see when you're skiing down, for example, what is below you. And then it is very important to know the area that is not maybe 100 meter high waterfall or something. I have been here now skiing for 40 years and I am still a pioneer in, in the surrounding. There's so many possibilities and, and so much to do still here and many of the tracks here have not been skied. So we are, we are here, we take the road up to the ski area, we will ski around here. But this is my playground, this old area here. And of course everything on the map is the East Fjord, the centrum of the East Fjord. Very, very nice area for hunting and for skiing and for walking. Every teenager wanted to go to the rescue team. That was just part of the culture here. And I was 16 when I started practicing. When I went to school in Akure, I took two winters there in, in training. All kinds of, of survival in the mountains and, and so on. When I moved back to the East Coast, I was living in Next Fjord, what's called Neskopstar. And I was captain of the rescue team there for seven years and helping them to build up a rescue team. What is important to know when you are in this long fjords like we are now, that uh, what have very much to do with the weather, when the weather is very little, uh, no weather like now, calm weather, then you can see that there is a little, what do you call it, little wind coming from the sea. But that is because the tide is rising. So the tide is high tide and low tide is a little bit more than six hours between. And now is high tide coming in the whole day. And that means often that that comes fog with it. We call it a day wind. When the, the, the highland heat up and the Tracking cold air from the sea. That is the Eastford Fox, what you saw this morning. But now the sun is melting it down. All right. Ready? Icelanders were not using the skis very much on 20th century. We started using skis. And I think when the Norwegian came around, 1870 to 1900, they were used to use skis. And I think they teach us in many ways to, to ski and use skis for, for going between places. In the old days, where skis not to not for fun, <laughs> like today, we, we go out just to have fun and, and get uh, rid of the office for a while. In the old days, like when my mother is born and raised in Vodalavik, who is behind the mountains here, and for example, before Christmas, her father, he walked from there 25 kilometers and 500 meters over mountain to buy things for Christmas, for example. And they were walking back with maybe 30 kilo on the back. Something, something nice for the family and so on. So over the mountain, when it was snow, it was easier to go by skis. And uh, 40 years ago, it was always snow in the winter time all the way down to the town. Now it seems to be at this snow level is going maybe two, three hundred meter higher than 40 years ago. I have no idea why that is. That can be because of this climate changing. But that can also just be waves in the, in the weather or something. But at least in, in my memories when I was walking to school and, and when we were out playing, there were always blister, always snowstorm. But now that is more rain, if, if, if that will, I mean down here, but uh, then you, when, you, when you go up to two, three hundred meters, you are already in snow. So we have always the snow on the top of the mountain. 
So what that says, you got we were just pioneers on uh, uh, not the good equipment. We had uh, some carpets we were trying to ski on, and then came better skis. Then came a ski lift, and another ski lift, and another ski lift. We have three ski lifts here. Very nice groomer to prepare the slopes, and uh, all that is, is much more taken care of. Now the sun is out, so we need sunglasses. And my son is going out with me on all of this now. He's 18 years old. We go skiing together, or the whole family though, go skiing together. But then also during the hunting is mainly my son coming with me. My daughter is though, she's 15, she wants to try and, and want to come. And my youngest daughter. Though. But my son is very interested in it and loves to go with me hunting. And, and that is just nice, then the old guy is teaching the young guy and I keep the habit or the tradition keeping on. Yeah, now we are at the ski area called Otskar. Very little but very nice ski area in the east coast of Iceland. The three lifts, we call disc lifts, what you call bottom lift I think. And uh, that goes from about 600 meter, I think, 650 meter up to 900 meter, almost. A good slopes, one of the best ski areas in Iceland. I am a skier and a walker, but I am a hunter first. We are hunting on the same area as my grand grandfather was hunting. And we have stories of that hunt, and we are maybe somewhere and sit down for a coffee break, and then I can tell him story about how his grandfather was doing, or grand-grandfather was here when 1920, and also different hunt, of course. This is just original in our bones to, to live and, and use the nature. We are, we are kind of Inuits here <laughs> in the East. From beginning of August, we can say, to mid-September about. And then I'm every day out with hunters, and uh, they are not allowed to go hunting uh, reindeers in Iceland without a guide, so that is where I come in. And I write rapport about every deer who is hunted, and that is very well organized by the government here. I am the government guy in, in these hunting trips. I have to check how old the deer is, and that is right, of course, stack or cow, and, and help the guys to get the easiest way down, because normally that is not a problem to hunt the deer, that is to, to get the, the meat home. So I often put the deer on the mountain, and uh, we carry the meat, but sometimes we track them down, if it is not far from a road or something, so that's a tough work. You never know how the day will end. You go out 8 o'clock in the morning hunting reindeers, you have no idea where they are. Or, yes, you have maybe an idea, but you don't know they have feet, so they can, can walk far distance on, on short time. So, in fact, you never know how the day will be, and where you will hunt, and when you will come home. So. For my wife, Berglind, that can be difficult for her uh, also because I am not, I'm not around two months a year, I am, I am, I am never home. Then later on in the October, go with my friend in the south part of Iceland to hunt geese. There are plenty of geese around there and, and, and uh, then in November is uh, it's the tomical season, 
uh, the white bird of living up in the mountain. And I love that hunting for myself and, and, and uh, that is our Christmas food, so I am born and raised with us. This hunting, my father was a hunter and that is where I get this thing from. But uh, very important that we are doing that on a sustainable way, that is, that we, we will never, or I would never like to, to destroy some spices. We are always just using the nature in, in a good way. And that is of course the best meat you can get. I know, for example, in the world there are many skiers are also hunters. This is just people who are interested in outdoor and, and, and nature and, and, and hunting is just uh, using the nature in a, in a sustainable way, like skiing on the snow who will be disappeared in, in the spring. So, yeah, this all connect somehow. The first thing that would come up in my mind if you would ask me who I am, I am, I am a hunter. I am born and raised in a hunter family. My father was hunter guide and was hunter his whole life. And I would be depressed if I could not hunt. But, but all the way from the beginning, we, we do that with respect from the, for the animal. And, and I know very well that I am taking life when we are hunting. But I know also very well if we would not hunt the reindeers, they would get too many. They would suffer because of, of they would eat, eat all the grass and they would start dying out of hunger. So using it in a positive right way and do it well, do it, uh, how can you say it, fair for, for the animal and for everyone else, that is, that is, uh, that's me. But then is this of course all together is is Sivar Guðjónsson is, is and I cannot maybe ascribe that what is higher or better or whatever but but uh, I am just an outdoor person that is maybe the only only way to ascribe me. Yeah, in the walking week we take the kids, park the cars here and then we just have to hire two, three hundred meters up and then we go along the ridge very safe and easy, but the kids they really get the mountain feeling and the mountain view. They are on the top of the mountain view over the whole fjord. That is great to do for the kids, to try to teach them to enjoy nature. To go out skiing with my family is of course just one of the best things you can do with your, with your family together. If you talk about Icelanders, only Icelanders, this is a family sport, real family sport. Everyone, all of my friends, they go out together with the kids. And you, you can see three, four generations skiing together. And that's easy, that's nice. That is, that is to be together out in the nature. That is Icelandic skiing. If you want to live in Iceland, you have to ski. What else can you do during the winter? Ski. That, that, that is what life is about in the winter time.